removes the, the double gank threat from Rocket, kind of, because it's not worth ganking for Lulu all that much. So we'll have to see what the remaining picks end up being. Well, there's the Lulu off the table already. Origin targeting Nuke Ducker, their bands, Azia and Yasuo gone. Peke's Azia left a little bit to be desired when we saw it in the finals. And interestingly, Peke has run Vladimir into Azia in the past, but it was a long time ago, only week five. Rocket will reply with a Callista. So on track, the Yasuo is the only a little surprising. See, I like getting rid of the unconventional mid-picks from Nuketuck and just making sure Xpeke gets to that laning phase. Uh, in the interview, obviously, Mr. Alice came out and said, well, we have the best mid laner in Europe and Xpeke is the weakest link on their team. I don't know if I agree with that, but I do think the matchup, respectively, between the mid laners is the closest one in this series. Yeah, and of course, that uh, Yasuo pick from Nuketuck was what allowed Rocket to beat Origin the last time they met. Our Origin was 0-2 against Rocket. Victor's taken off the table, so Shen is still up, and GP as well. Those are the two big discussions that we had, as well as Sivir. And people will expect the Gangplank first lock in here for Origin, unless they want to use this first game to just sniff out whether Rocket actually can play it into Soas well enough, or Soas as a counter. You know, teams maybe just getting information in this first game of the series and then adapting picks and bans later on. We saw Origin adapt pretty well against Fnatic in that series as well. That's why it went to a game five. So obviously you have no clue what these teams and these captains uh, in terms of their coaches are thinking. Yeah, and we heard Ducky on stage saying we couldn't show everything because it was against Fnatic. They had to try being our A game and it will be a first lock-in gangplank. Relatively safe for those barrels. Now we see whether Steve has a counter. Obviously we didn't mention Elise. The prime jungle pick for early aggression is open and it can neutralize the jungler and then get access to the lane. So that might be a pick for Yankas here. Overall, I wonder if Rocket is actually going to pick up the Ari early to get some pressure in the mid lane. Even though Yamato came out with some pretty strong words, <laughs> words about that champion pick on the analyst test, so perhaps they just wait for Nuketuck to counter pick later on in the series. And on this patch, Ari's been played seven times only by Ryu and Xpeke. Those are the only players that have played that champion, so we'll find out whether or not they have a priority with so many bans on the mid lane. But we've seen Peke running Twisted Fate as well. There's a few other options. Orianna's up there. Yeah not really the mains, but... In scenarios like this, when Azir and Victor are off the table, you obviously see other mid laners rise to the occasion, and then you can easily see an Ari versus Orianna matchup in the mid lane come out on either side, and it looks like Rocket is not going to go for the Elise. They're just going to say, Origin, do you really want that? We may have an answer ready, and they're going to go for the early Sivir, and they definitely want to lock in that Ari. So it seems that Nuketuck wants to have this matchup ready into whatever Peke has left in his champion pool. Yeah, and it's definitely hitting Peke again with all of these champions off the table. Yeah, Find out where two. he's going to prioritize a few options. But of course, not taking the Elise means Amazing Will next to Instalock that and the Brahm, which is just continuing to show strength and power on this patch. I mean, I don't have to repeat myself too much. I'm a big Brahm fanboy overall. I think it's just added value to taking it here because you take it away from Rocket and it doesn't allow them to block the exploding barrels from the Gangplank later on in the game. So less peel again. We might see a, an Alistar come out here on the side of Vander or his, you know, his comfort pick, which is the Thresh. Overall, though, I think Origin is leading in the draft so far. So a decent start then for Origin. For Rocket, they've got a mixture of sort of everything. Some wave clear, some engage, some pick. With Gragas, they've got some more disengage thrown into the mix. And Alistair could add to the front line. But what are they running into Gangplank? That is the big question that I still want to know. If Fizz is gone. We've seen Steve play Rumble. Maokai's up. But what do you, what do you want to run against? a scurvy pirate like that. Quite peculiar that Rocket's keeping their fifth pick counter pick for the top lane, no flex pick in the remaining role, so it's a solo counter pick on that gangplank, even though it was revealed in the very first rotation of this pick and ban phase. You always have to look at jungle and top lane combined, of course. Gangplank and Elise is one of the very, very strong early game jungler duels, so we need to see what Steve whips out or if Rocket are going to go for the lane swap. They might want to see what Origin ends up picking in the AD carry position and see if they can prompt the lane swap to get through the, the early game phase that way and then just start rotating and making picks with the Sivir on the hunt. Well, we'll find out in a few seconds as Origin are going to lock in what is expected to be their mid laner with Peke sitting on Flash Teleport. You have to expect the likes of Diana, maybe Twisted Fate. Something that we have seen a couple of times in recent weeks. They've only got a few seconds left with the single target focus champions we've seen from Elise from Vayne. Maybe a TF would be smarter, but if they want scaling, they're kind of going all in as far as their solo lanes are concerned. The fact that Pekka had to pick up Vladimir here does seem like Rocket did a good job in hitting him in terms of champion pool. 
I do think eliminating the Fizz and the Azir and the Victor out of the draft and then just early picking the Ari seems that expect has to go for Vladimir. Vladimir by no means is a bad pick, but it requires scaling, it allows Rocket to push in the mid lane early, get more pressure, and then start challenging Mithy and Amazing when they go for that vision a little more and hopefully snowball the game that way. Obviously, the guy that has to survive will be Steve in the top lane against that gangplank. So, Peke, 4-1 and one on that Vladimir. The only team that gave him a loss was, in fact, Rocket. And it was actually a game where I believe Nuttak was running a Zia. That is ifs and buts. It will be the Hecarim now locked in to challenge Origin. So, a lot of mobility, a lot of team fight, and those TP ganks could be very impactful. But Steve's first game on Hecarim, he fed a lot because he yep. was focused heavily, lacking that utility summoner. Yeah, he didn't have to flash that game and obviously was a rough entry into the LCS. So if we compare both these compositions, what strikes me the most is the lack of innate wave clear on Origin side. They really need to change some barrels to get that wave clear off or Pekka needs to run into the wave. If you compare that to Rockat, they can have Ari max range wave clear. Barrels can help a little bit and Sivir can always rotate into the mid lane to start clearing those waves. So quicker plays can come out of Rocket and Origin. They will have to play slower and set up their plays a little better, use the side waves to, to their control and just start pressuring the map that way. They've shown in the finals that they can do that, but they have a risky composition if they should fall behind because Rocket can spike very hard in the mid game. We'll find out whether or not Rocket will get the opportunity to spike in the mid game. They came out the gates a little slow yesterday against Giants. They won't have that opportunity against Origin. The lineups are locked in. Let's dive into the second round of the 2015 European Regional Qualifiers. The gauntlet is going to be pretty tough for us. It is about being good and then you need to be proactive. It's the key to victory. The best team is going to make it out of the gauntlet. It will mean a lot to go to the World Championship. It's every player's dream. They obviously want to go to Worlds. They will not uh, make it easy for us. Want to go to Worlds. That is what is on the line in the regional qualifier. Rocket have already defeated one opponent on the way to the finals. They'll have to take down the only team to give Fnatic a loss this summer. It is Origin. Game one of our best of five. You guys know the hashtags. You guys know the Twitter. Let us know who you think will be victorious this series. And if you we don't know oh. the hashtags. Hashtag OG win. Hashtag RSC win. Your Twitter noob. Permanent support professionalism, Crepo. All right. But I'm worried about Origin if they fall behind. I think the composition is nice, but it's a little greedy in terms of wave clear. However, I love seeing Niels play that Vayne. In the first game of the split, I believe he started playing Vayne. It was against H2K, where he, he got ahead with Miffy and he tumbled out of, out of the Sivir boomerangs as well, and he got a lead that way. So really good performance of him on the multiple times I've seen him play Vayne. Obviously, he's not afraid to play at the front of the fight. We saw that against Fnatic too, when he was play, was backed up by the Lulu, etc. He was right in front, dodging skills. If he gets hit, he's dead, but he never got hit. He's so good at sidestepping things. And Miffy Niels as a whole, as a duo, are very strong in lane. And we do see Niels and Miffy already in lane. They've walked across two Rocket wards at this Niels point in time. Rocket seems to have initiated the lane swap. So clever warding from Rocket. And we'll see which jungler is going to get enabled from this lane swap. We talked about how Origin could match Fnatic's lane swap. Can Rocket get one step ahead of Origin's game plan? I mean, they've got a team comp that could punish early, but Rocket as a team, not traditionally been able to do that. Well, in the lane swap, obviously the map opens up a, middle, a little more, and this gives much more the advantage to these teams that have the quick wave clear. If these side lanes start stacking up, towers go down, lanes get longer, it is much quicker for Rocket to cl quickly go clear wave, sp spam some abilities, and it's gone. Whereas opposed, imagine if Niels has to go clear 12 creeps. That is going to take a while. Compare that with Rawless, who can just move over, cast Q, W, three all attacks, and the wave is gone. So in the mid game, this will obviously give more momentum to Rocket. We'll see if they can use that momentum. Rocket uh, were able to punish Giants yesterday. And Rocket looked better than they have all split long. And now their opponent is theoretically much stronger. We see Yankos and Steve. They're holding hands in the jungle. And we can see on the opposite side an invasion from Soez and Amazing. Yeah, very safe invaded too. They obviously have some deports there, so they know 
pretty much exactly that the map is divided to the left side and the right side right now compared to the traditional bottom and top side because that's what happens in the lane swap. We'll have to see how quick these towers go down. We have three rocket, uh, three origin members in the bot lane right now. This is what lane swaps have devolved into. It started with the 4v0, now back to the 3v0 standard. Rocket are late to this tower though, so as a reaction, they may, not, may actually have to send over Yankos to help speed up that tower clearing process because look at the damage on the tower from origin as well. If you get that tower down first, the momentum it gives allows you to be one step ahead. A team like Origin, if they're one step ahead in the lane swaps, they will punish you eventually. Especially with a team composition that wants to go even into mid game and scale to late. So for Origin, they will get this tower. We'll take a quick look at Rocket. I think should clear it relatively soon though. And when Origin has played lane swaps like this, usually they bounce the wave back to Niels and send Soas back to the top lane because they really like having their top lane in the top lane after in the second phase of the lane swap. It does look, however, that this time because he's playing Gangplank, he's actually going to get the farm. So Niels and Miffy are going to head top. They may relinquish Dragon Control, but they have a Scuttle Crab there already so they can move around what Rocket could do as a reaction and likely invade with a Deep Red Vision should the Dragon ever come out. And Rocket also do similar, donating the Tower Gold to Steve, 275 for that Hecarim. So both top lane carries getting a little bit of early assistance. And we saw Soaz's barrel mechanics in the final. He'll need to keep up that level of play because he's the only safe wave clear that Origin has to play with. And we're now around the four minute mark, the fourth minute mark. This is when you usually see the supports roll mid because this is a passive matchup to expect just base. They actually opt to not do that. Soaz knows if he frees, they'll just come and push him off the freeze and deny him farm. So he actually pushed back the wave towards Rocket. He doesn't mind that. He already secured himself some juicy CS. He's 10 CS up on Steve. Whereas Steve, he let the wave freeze, then he based. So Steve actually just lost some farm there. He could have actually pushed out initially first. So it is hard to see what the right thing is, push or freeze in multiple cases. But Steve ended up basing and now he goes towards Soas, but he's already down 12 CS. I'm just gonna double check on experience here. Steve is level 3.4. And expect and Soas is a full level ahead of him already. Big difference. The experience is something that I like to talk about that is a little more difficult to see. And talking about that first step, you can see Origin already on the tower in the top lane. Because Niels and Mithy got there first. Pekka has eaten the charm already. And this is a matchup that we wanted to look at. Pekka's champion pool got pinched and it went back to something he hasn't played in over seven weeks. Week five of the regular season was the last time we saw Vladimir. It is, however, incredibly hard to successfully gank a Vladimir, at least in one attempt, you'll need at least two attempts to get him. Look at the, the amount of defensive summoners that he has in addition to that Sanguine pool. Yesterday, hang on, Nuke Duck. Wow, Pekka eats a charm. That makes life a little easier. Well, there's no jungle around, so that's fine. <laughs> but yesterday, Rocket was camping the hell out of mid lane. That, that was their plan. Kill Pepinero three times, make him tilt, and just get him off the map. But this time, Yankos couldn't find an opening. Rocket earlier pinged him out, so they have a good idea of where he is on the map. Now he's just going to show top, so Rocket yeah, giving away much information, and meanwhile, Soaz is comfortably farming and winning that bot lane matchup. Look at Amazing, he, he's supplementing the top lane. Yankos isn't doing anything on this top lane, he is losing the pressure. There is no flash for Steve. If a cocoon connects and a barrel gets chained, Steve is going to be in trouble. Soaz is moving up. Steve is trying to play that guitar to his heart's content, and Amazing realizes they don't want this. He's just going to do a drive-by. It's a little weird. Tell me why. Nothing happened. No, I was <laughs> really expecting the dive. Yeah, we were and getting ready for hype I first, build, but, but... I'm building up the hype, and then Amazing's just like, no. Hashtag not worth, and they backed away. All right, so this gives Yanko some more time to farm. Obviously, it was just shadowing that lane, making his presence known, but it allowed Rocket to push in. Now they can start moving these pieces around on the chessboard. If you group a couple of members mid, Peke will have an incredibly hard time clearing his wave. Look at how he's zoned already in this matchup. Nuketuck's level 6, Peke's level 6, but the kill potential, the threat is all on Nuketuck's side, especially when Yankos is hovering on the left side of this lane. Means Peck is going to back away. I think that wave was pushing towards Nuke Duck. We'll see if he's going to reset it. Minions are still pushing a little bit in his favor. That uh, Orbit Deception means Pekka will lose maybe one or two CS before he gets in lane. Marginally down, but that is balanced out by the fact Steve is behind Soaz. Yeah, so what Nuke Duck did there was freeze the wave and tell Pekka, if you want to stay in lane, you will have to fight to come and get your CS. Obviously, the reaction from Pekka will be base. Then the reaction from Nuke Duck is push out because otherwise, Pekka will come back with an item lead, full health and he will just destroy Nuketuk, and then Nuketuk's behind on the base. So good play by both these players. The correct choices were made. But overall, Rocket leads slightly in gold, but I feel like Origin is leading in terms of scaling and pressure. We'll find out if Origin can keep it up. They've been given a small reprieve that Mr. Rawls 
first item choice after a long sword is an avarice blade. So Niels with a cutlass already, he's not going to be under as much pressure as what would have been a BF sword sivir. But we'll see if Mr. Riles can farm up quickly enough to get that two item spike. Yeah, so Riles just saying, okay, we're not going to fight. We're only going to farm. I'm just going to get more money's worth out of my farming. As a vein, you're happy to see this, though. If it, the worst point in, in your build, the really hard threshold, is Cutlass into BF Sword. That is the roughest part of any vein matchup. And if you can dodge that, either Cutlass into Pickaxe or Cutlass into, hey, Avarice Blade, yeah. then you're obviously really happy. You see on the bottom side of the map, Origin are picking up a dragon. And this is... Some of the Giants members criticized Rocket for not being able to play aggressive. And this is kind of showing on the map right now, Origin could be punished a lot harder for the lack of wave clear for their early game, just for the way this game plays out. But Rocket are making greedy choices, passive choices. They're afraid to make a mistake and kind of losing their blue buff already. So blue buff down, Dragon down. Despite having a marginal gold lead for Origin, they're very happy to go even. We see Steve with his first back. He's already picked up there's Ninja Tabby and an early Home Guard. So if a teleport play were to start with Onslaught of Shadows, that could be extremely impactful, but he has to deal with Cannon Barrage and a potential follow for Gangplank as well. I do like the, the early Home Guards. I think that's something that was lacking overall in Europe this season. Teleport top lane is replayed, but very often with no Home Guard. So the flanks, they weren't really there, and that seems to be something that Rocket actually values. They win a lot of their games by just sending Steve in a, in a teleport flying position, usually with Maokai, this time with Hecarim, to see if he can pull it off, because obviously he has very little damage. A lot of these, uh, a lot of his gold is spent on defensive stat. You know, Ninja Tabi obviously doesn't help you go all that offensive, and then Home Guards is a bit of a gold sink, so we need to see if he can pay off on that investment. You'll find out whether or not he can claim those dividends. It's for the time being. It's been a fairly standard lane swap. Initiated by Rocket, Origin, you can argue, had a tiny window of advantage to at least get in the tower early and some damage in the top outer turret. But as it stands, both teams happy and content to farm their way up. And we need to see where the next point of engage is going to be, because for Origin, the longer this laning phase extends, the happier they are going to be. Yeah, for me, Origin has already won this lane swap. The fact that they had an initial experience lead on their top laner, their bot lane didn't get challenged. Their mid laner has almost no wave clear, but didn't get grouped upon. They got the early dragon in addition to that, have good vision control. They got to level 6 comfortably on all their members except Mithy, who will hit it soon. Yeah, Origin, they're definitely happy with this lane swap because they still have to get over the biggest hurdle, which is the mid game. By no means have Rocket fallen behind this game, but this is just a big discrepancy in terms of mid game power that Origin will need to survive. Now, finally, we see Rocket move into the mid lane. Pekka is in so much trouble. He's knocked up. He's charmed. Sanguine's going to come out and Ghost, but the barrel sends him for a drink of water at the fountain. Well executed by Rocket. Big, big mistake from Xpeka. You need to see that gang coming. They were in the screen. You could have flashed earlier, pulled earlier, ghosted earlier, anything earlier. That's fine. And then don't waste it at the end. He was dead already. So a bit of an oversight from Origin in their vision control, and Xpeke could have reacted to that, because Vander entered his screen within vision before that combo connected. You could have easily pulled that combo, but props to Rocket for pulling off that gank, and that's what they need to do. Punish the fact that Origin could fall behind in terms of map control, move in. Even if they don't kill Xpeke there, they chunk him out, and that takes away, chips away tower damage, gives away uh, map control in terms of warding. Now Soas gets his base cancelled, look where Rawls is, to which speed they're pressuring, so Rocket they have their foot on the pedal. And let's see if they can get anything from it. Origin want to reply. They're down a kill. The body slam comes in from Yankos. Exhaust is thrown onto the horse. And Yankos just gets melted by Niels' vein. Steve puts the onslaught of shadows down to reply. It's been a one for one. Amazing's forced to flash out. The barrels are out, and that's going to burn through. Oh, Defensive flash. flash from Soaz. And the ticking down from the Ignite, or the passive rather from GP, gets one more kill. Peke's come in as well. Cocoon connects. There's oh, no cold. flash from Peke. Amazing's looking for more. He's not going to find it. And they end up trading what was two for two in the top lane. I respect it. Amazing. Not getting out of there. So a couple of nice flashes, though, from both these teams. Managed to survive on a sliver of health. Obviously, wouldn't mind seeing that again. Obviously, we did not count in Rawas, who was all the way in the bottom lane, because there was a 4v5 on the top lane in the tower. That's why it was so close. But Rawas, he's been chipping away at this tower. He now gets it to about 20%. He's going to let the wave die. So that will be a gold increase for Rocket. And they end up in the lead overall. Greedy from uh, Rocket. Honestly, trying to defend this tower. They get lucky that Amazing takes tower aggro. Good read by Yankos for the body slam, though. But he drops. But it gets rid of the 
uh, the repel at least. Now Nukta comes in, gets cancelled a couple of times, but he's keeping a lot of these members low. Look at Steve, dodges the barrels, but then Soas barely dodges that over deception with a flash. Good play, I think Origin right here need to disengage. This cocoon is nice if you land it, but Amazing was expecting a potential flash here from Xpeke, but just couldn't quite get it. But overall, solid play from Rocket holding it. They lost two members for two, but they had Wallace pushing in the bot lane. Oh, they did, and it's gonna be another one here. Peck is in trouble, he's gonna sanguine away. I think the charm was held. Not gonna matter, because Yankos gets another one, and Peke with no summoners, unable to avoid the second gank. And Origin need to play with more respect for this Rocket lineup. The lack of wave clear is, is coming to bite them in the ass because it's just not really working out for them. They just get out-rotated because they don't have the, the forward pressure. Every time the lanes just get pushed in so easily, Peke tries to push out that wave. He gets surprised all of a sudden. Okay, now sitting on a comfortable 1.6k gold lead here. Overall, good early game. Yeah, decent turnaround for Rocket. Slow out of the gates, but they've made up for it in the last few minutes. And with Dragon up in 30 seconds, Quite a few cooldowns available. We'll see if they're going to risk challenging. We did see the tower go down bottom lane, as you mentioned, Krepo, where that gold lead has come from. And Rals has also reset to defend down the top outer turret as one of the primary wave clear champions for Rocket. The tower to watch, though, is the one in the mid lane. If that one falls, then Rocket can start playing it up. Because Origin are doing a good job of sneaking into the enemy jungle and taking away a couple of buffs. Really impressive how they've been doing that. The second blue buff denied now from Nuketax, so that way they're trying to keep him down. Peke is still farming. So he's on even CS with Nukeduck, so should Rocket fail to really exploit that early game lead they have, then Origin will comfortably scale into the late game. However, we've seen Rocket finally punish some of these early, I wouldn't say mistakes, but opportunities that Origin have left them. I like that term, opportunities. And we see Origin looking for an opportunity, but there's a pink ward in the river, which nobody's gone to check yet. Always check your brushes. You sh they should know by now, but there's a ward somewhere. I can't believe they haven't checked that. That's given Rocket all the time to set up for a fight. Steve's coming in with a teleport. He's oh got gosh. the shadows to onslaught on Origin. Cannon Barrage is coming down. Dragon was secured by Origin. That's one, that's two kills. Niels will be the third. It's just a matter of time. He's tumbling, he's ducking, he's diving, he's charmed. Niels is down. Three kills for Dragon in favor of Rocket. Yeah, Rocket, good vision control, you could say, or Origin sloppy mistake not finding that pink or They make the right decision with the information, though, and that is key. Vander acts as if he's face checking scared. Oscar goes to him. <laughs> and he buys enough time for his team to get in position. Rocket could easily spell out the way that fight was going to go. And he's like, okay, Steve, you're teleporting here. We're going to go in. And Nukuk, he was the first one to go in aggressively in that fight. He drew all the attention. Soas had to play defensive. He couldn't stack those barrels gonna see that again here. So, Fander bought some time. They know where the barrels are. They don't really care about the dragon. They care about the fight. But watch how Nuketuck engages immediately on Soas. He has to orange out, but then Steve's there in the flank. He eats to condemn too. Soas is already too low. Mithy is just dying in the AoE. His shield doesn't matter which angle it takes because he's just getting completely wrecked. And then Niels has to kite, but good charm flash gonna come out here from Nuketuck. And overall, Rockhead, they take three kills for one. They give up a second dragon. That's fine. They want to snowball their gold advantage. They don't care about stats from the dragon. I was watching the minimap as well. Peke was still pushing out that mid lane. Right, right? That Oscar that went to Vanda, really punishing Origin. They felt they were safe in the vision. It didn't work out. We did see that pink ward actually go down, though, as Amazing and Peke reversed out from the fight. And Rocket going to use that wave clear mid lane. That last standing tower. There's nobody here to clear this. It's just going to be a couple of waves. Look at that damage. Well, Nobody can challenge that. it. Nobody can walk up They're, and do that. Wait, imagine, if this, it. imagine if this was any champion, say Ari can come out, Azir obviously is banned, Lulu is banned. So good champion pool pressure from Rocket. They take away the Ari. They're on red side, traditionally speaking. In a matchup where mid laners is the, watch, the lane to watch, you see a counterfeit come out on the fifth rotation. However, because we had so many bans come out, Nuketuk opted for the early Ari, put pressure on Xpeke, and this manifests in the way this game is playing out. Obviously, there's more factor than just the mid, mid lane picks, but overall, Origin are just too weak on the wave clear side. And I think we need to give credit to Rocket. Picks and bans worked out, got them a team comp that could give them a mid game lead. Rocket then executed a lane swap. They then initiated some pressure, and Rocket have a lead. But this is where things get challenging. Can Rocket play the side lanes well enough? to get more objectives. We're approaching 20 minutes. We've got a 4,000 gold lead for Rocket, who are, by a large margin, the underdogs in this match. Very few people expect Rocket to win, considering how well Origin played against Fnatic. Yeah. But Rocket have a team comp that can do it in game one. 
And the problem I have with the origin lineup, it is so good if you could put any of these three champions being Gangplank, Vladimir, and Vayne in a side lane for a 1-3-1, one, one, and you could hold a wave clear in the mid lane. Say Gangplank split pushing top lane, Vladimir split pushing in the bot lane, your AD carry can somewhat hold mid. Fantastic. Any other iteration of that too. Problem is they all want to be in the side lane. Nobody wants the guy wants to be the guy in the mid lane holding the waves because nobody can. Vayne can't do it, Vladimir can't do it. GP to an extent can do it with barrels, but it's incredibly hard to time it. So in that sense, Origin kind of overlooked that in their composition. Imagine if Niels just picked a Corky here, something generic, just wave clear duty, utility champion. Could have solved a lot of problems because then he would be in the mid lane right now. Pekka would be split pushing in the bot lane and Origin would comfortably one through one into the late game. Something generic, but it is Niels' most played champion. Nine games this split, so it's not like it would have been an oddball pick. Regardless of that fact, Origin have elected into this late game scaling team composition and they are getting some key items. Triforce picked up, we've got Lucidity Boots for both Sora's pick here. Blade of the Rune King for Niels, he's working his way towards Phantom Dancer as well. But in situations like this, what I like seeing from teams that fall behind early but have the better late game is simply pick up two Scrying Orbs because the only way Rocket are really going to close out this game is rotate for tier 2 powers and you should be able to comfortably hold that and force the fight or they're going to bait Baron. That's probably going to be Rocket's next step. As a team, they have advanced a lot in terms of shot calling, but they still need to work on closing out the game. Yesterday, we made the remark that Rocket plays the map well, but in slow motion. Things take too much time. If Origin can cancel one of the few upcoming Baron baits and Dragon is not a win condition to Dragon to zero, then Origin can buy some, themselves some time. That's why I would like to see some more Scrying Orbs come out, or just oddly place deep ports that, Origin uh, that Rocket will fail to sweep. So Origin's vision is what we're going to be looking at. We did see a very quick glimpse of Steve and so as Steve has gone for an early frozen hot, but 60% of that arm is ignored by those barrels. And so as easily pushes him out of lane. Steve has to respect that damage. Steve barely made it out of that one alive. So this is what we're talking about. The one blue on pressure on the side lanes, even drawing Vander to help. Rocket will need to start grouping up more efficiently. Push out away, don't fight. Never stay to fight. Always just push out and rotate. Use your number advantage, the fact that you have poke and wave clear to siege on towers. That's what they need to do. And then eventually collapse back into the Baron area. But yeah, amazing doing. Fantastic job here. Look, amazing and mythy. They are identifying what their lose condition is. We always talk about win condition, you know? How do we straight up lose this game if we give away a Baron? Well, just ward it. Get the Scuttle Crab. They can't deny the Scuttle Crab vision. Doesn't matter. If you're standing on it, it's not going to go down any quicker. So in that sense, they're identifying the right part of the map to play on. And then Origin, or Soaz, did a good job chunking out Steve. Rocket just lost a minute. And Origin are going to get a tower for this as well. Rocket dancing around the map. We saw Nuke Duck trying to pressure the top inner turret while Steve was holding Soaz bottom. But that didn't lead to anything. That didn't allow Rocket to gain anything more. And they're losing some of that gold lead. Look, Origin, they're not let up. They've now got some deep vision yeah, in Rocket's fantastic. jungle. These are some of the tools that Origin need to avoid the lose condition. <laughs> Rocket are, are simply leaning too far backwards and they're they're buying into this one through one instead of pushing out the lanes and grouping up together using that on the hunt. Now Origin are actually doing what Rocket should be doing. They push down mid lane somehow, they're rotating to the top lane. They just taken two towers in the top lane. The gold differential from 4,000 gold now went down to 2,000 gold. They can sacrifice this dragon if they want to. They're comfortably getting back into the game and we'll need to see Rocket group up and get a fight. That's how they've won or gotten a gold advantage so far in this game. Every time, just group and fight. And with Origin's comp and the lack of vision around Baron, if Rocket commit to somewhere else of the map for too long, Origin can melt that uh, Baron very quickly. See some respect from Rocket. They've not started Dragon. We'll try to figure out where all of Origin are. Now with the Ward in the pit, seem to start it. They do have good vision on yeah. Origin's red side, though. That is obviously the cost of that play from Origin on the top lane. You always need to look at plays around the map not in like the 30 second window where the tower falls, but then add a minute on top of that to see what did Rocket gain while his origin was in the top lane. Well, they gained deep vision. Perfect triangle wards here in the bottom jungle, and they're going to use that to perhaps make a pick. If he wants vision, look, it's completely dark on the bottom side of the map because origin were focused on the top side of the map. They know this, but now Rocket have to capitalize and even out that gold advantage that origin got. They're going to do that by taking a first dragon. Teleport is available for Steve. The first wards stay alive long enough. He's got an easy entry behind Origin. Dragon secured uncontested from Origin. And this gives Miffy information. 
he hears the dragon's roar, so he says, okay, I can safely assume that there's a maximum of one or two people in the Baron area, so I can face it on my own. He doesn't need Amazing to hold his hand in the support jungle duo right now. He drops a couple of wards. Look where he's placing them as well, not in front of the Baron, but ever so slightly out of the pit. So you only need to see them walk into the Baron pit. You don't need to see what they're doing. What will they do in the Baron pit? Well, they'll be doing Baron. And that's a ward in the position that rarely gets swept. They also left one lone pink ward that obviously Steve is not going to check because who checks brushes in their own jungle? No, you never check them. That's the rule we've learned. Pink ward cost origin previous team fights. And you see Amazing and Yankos going to trade toe for toe. I believe those are two Cinder Hulk junglers as well. Amazing not going to Rune Glaive, which we've seen elsewhere. But it's one of the primary tanks for origin to leave the tanky stats. So far this game, Rocket not going just quite aggressive enough. And Origin, not panicking. We obviously, or, or very often we see in situations like this, we see the, the losing team panic and think that they need to even out the game. Now we see Vander Yankas move in. Oh, opening from Mitty. Cocoon connects after the Unbreakable Will. Vander's got damage reduction, but he is caught up. Emo Plague will start ticking, but the burst will not be enough. And the cow makes it out to live another day. <laughs> they don't like cows. So many spells and ultimates used on Vander here, but most importantly, they deny much of the deep vision. Rocket want to set a perfect deep vision to punish face sex. Orange says, well, it's not going to happen. We don't want to win a fight. We just want to keep the vision away and keep scaling into the late game. No matter how much armor Steve buys, it's not going to matter since those barrels penetrate 60% of the armor on gang on uh, enemies from Soas on that Gangplank pick. So he's obviously comfortably going to that late game. It's like a different build from Soas' Gangplank from the last time we've seen it. Heading towards that Ghost Blade as his second item. Has already upgraded Cannon Barrage to Death's Daughter, which was the more optimal build. Good Pink Ward clear, or Pink Ward put down from Nuke Duck that will deny the vision that we talked about earlier. Yeah, usually if you have only one Pink Ward to place, place it outside of the pit and then sweep the pit once. Blue teams are very rarely going to make their way into the Baron Pit and place a ward in the back. They're more likely to play a couple cheeky wards over the wall here to just spot you doing it. So. Obviously, if you have more pinks to place, place them all. If you have only one, place it outside of the pit and sweep the pit if you're a purple side team. I hope everybody's listening. Hashtag get that LP. That's crazy. Doesn't matter in solo queue. <laughs> they can see you doing Baron, they can see you vault lane. And it's, doesn't uh, matter. The theory, the theory could seep through. I am I'm hopeful. Ever the optimist. But as it stands, 10 minutes has gone by and Rocket have not touched a tower. Rocket have not pushed deep into Origin territory, and the gold grab is, gap is becoming less significant as two item spikes are hit from all of Origin. And look at this, there's one ward right here, and then the one on the right of your screen under that Gragas picture is another one from Origin. You can see it on your minimap. Two deep wards is all they need to just occasionally spot somebody rotating. Rocket by process of elimination, they can see whenever they walk somewhere and somebody on Origin twitches on the minimap, then they see, okay, the, there must be a ward around me, and then you try and find them. It's like, yeah, sink, sink your battleship kind of type of thing that you want to play and you want to look at all those wards. Rocket are doing the right thing. They're pushing out Origin all the way because they can't afford to do Baron if Origin is that close to them. You do see the top laners going head to head down bottom while Vanda, Yankos and Nuketak, they're going to set up. Amazing might be in trouble. He's going to repel up. Peck and Amazing trying to disengage. Barrel will hold Amazing against the wall as the Cocoon catches out the Fat Man. Defensive flash. Mithy does have a Glacial Fisher and he throws it out. That was he beautiful. Gragas. Gragas is stunned in place. Niels is going for a hunt in the night. He tumbles. He's invisible. Looks for Steve. Steve is down. I think So has chunked him out before he arrived. There's a tumble forward aggressively. A stun onto Nuketak. One more tumble into the Condemn. That means Nuketak should go down it does go down it's a silver bolt proc that takes him out so as was greedy with his teleport and by him not arriving gives away a four for three fight to make it the tower oh that was an absolutely fantastic fight play by multiple origin members up until the point where nuketuk was on one hit under the tower and niels tumbled forward they completely forgot about mr rawls he cleaned up that fight but before that that was a beautiful sequence of events the way they play that fight Fantastic overall, but yeah, Greed is not good, Greed is bad. They lose their tier 2 middle tower and they relinquish the map control back to Rocket. Soa still has his teleport for an advantage, so Baron should not go to Rocket uncontested. Alright, key things to watch here. Watch how the Repel dodges both Pulverize and Headbutt. Then they turn. Once they connect the, the Braum pass a little later on Yankos, because Cocoon holds him down. Miffy going to block some Ari damage, turns around the direction of his Glacial Fisher. They get Yankos. Now keep watching what happens in this fight. 
Neil stumbles in aggressively, expect is there. Steve arrives, but suddenly it's on 25%. Uh, they get Nuketuk here, one stack, two stack, and now you gotta, you gotta go back. You don't try to finish him off. Everybody greets here because he's stunned on the tower because of the heal. And everybody walks forward, takes a tower shot, a W from Sivir, then you get Hudba pulverized. Way too much. Origin could have disengaged, made this a 3 for 1 with Soas foot pushing in the bot lane. Instead, they gave up 3 or 4 kills to Mr. Rawls and an extra tower. But before that, such a magnificently played fight by Origin. And this is why they're lauded as the second best team in Europe. Because in addition to good shot calling, they have some of these really good team fight synergies. One more, another engage. Condemn comes out from Niels. The Fisher put down by Miffy. Hemo Plague used defensively, but it's a distraction tactic. Soaz has teleports and is pushing up in the top lane. It was Soaz that chunked out Steve before that fight began, but he's going to retreat now. Yeah, watch Orange right now. If they can drag more members from Rocket to defend against Soaz, they might actually rotate into a potential Baron or go back to the Dragon, who has spawned already right now. So. Origin are finally able to start putting some pressures because of their team fight capabilities. Mithy Kato. Mithy and Pecky got knocked up by that pulverized. This is the teleport advantage. It's come to pass. Soaz is looking for targets. Cannon well, Barrage will get chunked down. Mr. Rawls is shut down. The barrels come out and it won't be enough. Double kill for Niels. It was over just as quickly as it started. Origin even out the goal. Yeah, and this is why Mithy was audaciously posturing around the Dragon Arena. He knows if I get caught, we have teleport to back ourselves up. Rocket doesn't. We're already strong in a 4v4. Well, we'll completely Shrek them in a 4v5. And that's what they did. Once one bomb passive applies, that's all you need. You have enough members that can dash, auto attack, tumble forward to get more of those procs. That's why I love Braum. You can just apply the passive and peace out and not die in the middle of the team fight. Unlike Alistar, who has to be in the middle. Yes, he has his ultimate, but if that's out, you're you're a dead cow. So, uh, good team fight overall by Origin and good use of the teleport advantage that they managed to to get earlier in the game. Dragon number three as well. Two away from Aspect. Origin already have all the items they need to be comfortable at the 30 minute mark. They're even on gold. They're even on towers. So. As it stands, there's now more pressure on Rocket to bounce back and find more proactive play. Take a look at the gold on your screen. Soares 2k up. Yep. Jungler's small difference, and of course, AD carries even thanks to the excessive kills. Small lead in the middle lane for Nuketuk. Lead in the jungle. I mean, with the gold is 700 different, it's not a massive change. Yeah, but there's a big swing, however, on, yeah. on, on the top lane, so Soares definitely putting his mark down. Steve is itemized for team fights, I guess. Not quite sure if I like the build because the armor doesn't really all do, do, do that much against the gangplank. You're gonna pour it into a team fight, so the frozen heart is good against the Vayne, but it leaves you very weak against the Vladimir overall. It leaves Brahm also out of magic damage, so perhaps he should have just itemized more offensively and tried to dodge the barrels and try and kill Soas 1v1. Keep that split put pressure down. Because he's he's getting pressured continuously by Soas, and once he gets to the fight, he's often already dead or just too late. Talking about the items, Soares has had that Ghost Blade completed. Very close to getting his Eye Edge. We've got a completed Randian's Omen for Amazing versus two Cloth Armors for Yankos. We'll expand on those items in a minute as Niels is going to 1v1 Steve here with the help of a Cannon Barrage. So what we were talking about earlier, 1-3-1. One, one. Any of these side lane carries, be it Vayne or Gangplank or even Vladimir, can comfortably beat almost anything that Rocket sends their way. Maybe an outplay from Nuketuk can match the 1v1, but a Vayne can easily handle a Hecarim. It's almost impossible for, for Tank Hecarim to take down that Vayne because over time, two damage will, will destroy you anyways. What I like is that Miffy is seemingly building towards uh, Zeke's Harbinger. I think it, it's a must-buy second item for any support on this patch. It is simply too strong that you can give your AD carry 50% crit during a fight. And it will proc, and it lasts 8 seconds. That means you can put a 4-item AD carry if he goes BT 4th after Last Whisper on 105% crit. He's creating every hit at once at procs, and that can be, yeah, so disrupting because a lot of these teams don't really notice when a Zeke's procs. Yeah, assuming he's got that Eye Edge and Shiv or Phantom Dancer. For Niels at the moment, the only crit item is his PD, but he should be relatively close to that Eye Edge. Uh, well, about a thousand gold, so it'll take a little longer. But for Origin, it was a risky comp, limited wave clear, it was high scaling, but they took a gamble on Rockets. Tension for playing slow. Yep. We're now 32 minutes in, and it's Origin with the lead. Rocket had a great 10 minutes, but... It was close, though. They were behind 4,000 gold. We see an engage here on Nuketuk in the top lane. Teleport coming in from Steve. Steve, can he make a difference? Mithy's gonna throw down the Fisher, and we see he has the arrival of Amazing. The barrel! That helped Mithy get out! Mithy managed...
manages to survive. Says thank you, Yankos. High five. Amazing's going to flash forward. He's going to try and bait out the uh, charm. Not going to work. Flash from Pekka. Hemo plays got Ooh. three. He's sanguine under Nuketag. I think the Hemo's going to kill Nuketag, and he does. There's Niels looking for more. He's got himself some cow. He's looking for some beef. And Mr. Rolls is nowhere to be seen. We'll find out what they can do. Pekka's going to sanguine again. He goes golden as Mr. Rolls continues to run away. Where was Mr. Rawls in that fight? How did this all came to be? Rocket, they opted in for that fight. They could have disengaged, but they went for the teleport play. But they didn't look at where their AD carry was on the map. Uh, obviously, you have to watch if, if some Origin member was delaying him in some sense. But yeah, good play by Origin. It always looks like they're caught so far this game. I can remember at least three instances where they seemingly get caught, but they peel and survive long enough for the cavalry to arrive. And then that damage from Expeka. This is late game Vladimir. Obviously, if you get three members clumped up, you can get Hemoplake and pull underneath them. Yeah, then you're gonna win that fight. And you get enough time to do another Hemoplague to continue the fight. And if you already thought Origin were good in the 1-3-1, now they're 1-3-1 with Baron. It's looking a lot more dire for Rocket. And once again, out the gate, game one of the series, Rocket was slow against Giants yesterday. They're going to need to pick up the tempo if they get a similar pick and bans, because it's going to be very difficult to claw this game back. Now. Yeah, and complete props to Amazing and Mithy for stalling that Baron threat. A couple of deep ports aptly placed at the right time. Skull Crab's killed at the right moment on the map without getting caught themselves, bought themselves enough time. Because if you get a tower lead, say Rocket had a two tower lead in the early game, that is a couple thousand gold. If you get a couple extra kills, map pressure, CS, they had a 4,000 gold lead early speaking. That is a lot relatively to the time that you're in the game. But if you can prolong that lead to stay the same absolute value as these gold values on both these teams go up, relatively speaking, it falters and it becomes useless. Who cares if you're 4,000 gold difference if you have the superior scaling when you hit this 50k mark? Right now, Origin actually have the lead. They're comfortably scaling to late game. They have these Baron minions that are nullifying the wave clear from Rocket and they're looking to take down game one in this series. Well, they've got themselves a mid tier one tower. Glacial Fish has been used and the Cannon Barrage. Origin gonna not be unable to push deeper. Rocket shoving it backwards. As it stands, Origin are happy. They've evened out the kills. They've now got a tower lead, and they are accelerating their gold lead. An incredible amount. Dragon number four is up, and I do not think Rocket can contest this. Obviously, you don't want to walk into this Origin lineup. Right now, they're strong enough when they're grouped. It doesn't matter whether you have Wave Clear or not, if it's a full-on jungle fight. And that is something Gangplank as a champion is incredibly good at, so is Vayne, is at punishing people that are walking into you. Because Vayne kites very well in short range, and if... if the front line is constantly clawing at you and you can just tumble backwards and you walk into these barrels, then obviously Origin can deal a lot of damage. And they have enough peel coming out of Amazing and Mythia on, on that Braum Elise combination. So right now it's very hard for Rocket to find an opening. It really has to be Charm Flash into one shot. Or Pulverize Flash Engage, knock, knock back with head. But that is that has to be their window because just in pure standoff fights where everybody's hitting each other, I feel like Rocket had getting at the shorter end of the stick. So no flash on Yankos, Nuketak, or Vanda. So it's going to be a little bit more time before those plays can be up. Luckily for Rocket, fairly squishy so as in Niels. Should be a little easier to do that. Pickett does have 3k HP. Not the highest amount of resistances to speak of. So even if he gets caught, he could get melted very quickly. It's going to be incredibly hard to kill Niels too because he went for the Bloodthirster. He didn't go for any greedy IH shenanigans. He just wants to keep, you know, double lifesteal to stay in these fights. If you're already ahead, Getting more lifesteal will only make it easier for you to survive these fights unless you get one shot by Nukedog. Let's see if he does. The Fisher comes out. Mythian and Amazing, they're peeling. That's the front line that Origin wants. Steve, Steve? gets caught in place. Hemo Plague will burn through the pop. Not going to happen because Neil's going to shoot him down. Nukedog gets crit to death as Soez finds himself another. That's three. That's four. This will be the A. Silver Bolt barrel as well. Triple kill for Neil's Origin Ace Rocket. Yeah, and unless Rocket get a flank, one shot, one or two targets, it's simply not going to happen. When Mythi puts up that Valtor in front of the enemies, nobody's going to get to the carries. Nobody's going to get to expect it. So us or Niels, and they completely win that fight. Once one member falls, they just simply aggressively flash in. They're taking home game one. Easily closed out once Origin hit the 30 minute mark. Got their items, destroyed Rocket, and Origin come away 1-0. It was a greedy composition.
Yeah, and it was just a greedy, greedy early game as well. There was no wave clear in the mid lane at all. Rocket could have easily grouped a little earlier, pushed home their advantage a little more. Origin also got slightly, I wouldn't call it lucky, because they, they got their advantage in the very early of the stages, say first five minutes, due to better strategical play. But that lane swap, that was a little more even. If Origin got a little less momentum, then Rocket could have punished them a lot harder. They were down 4,000 gold. That should be game over when you're playing against a composition like this. But Steve, he never found that flank. Yeah. The only time he did, he arrived at 25%. So he chunked with barrel. Yeah, chunked it with barrels. And Origin just turned around and was like, okay, that's a dead horse. We're beating it, and we're turning back to the fight. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's just good shot. Come on. <laughs> that was good. Um, I also want to go back to what Ducky mentioned in the pregame, how Rocket as a team could be a threat, but sometimes, more often than not against the higher tier teams, they just don't show up when they need to. They had a good draft. They had the ability to punish. And after 20 minutes, Yes, they got the outer towers effectively between 10 and 20, but then just nothing else happened. Whether it was respect, whether it was fear, whether it was trepidation, whatever the cause, they took their foot off the gas, and that was what allowed Origin back in the game. If Rocket had continued to pressure Origin, all of those weaknesses would have been exposed, and that gold graph would not have looked the way it did at the end of the game. Overall, I did like what Rocket's intentions were, or their perceived intentions in terms of draft. Getting the early pressure on Xpeke, yes, he did fine with Vladimir in the late game, but he did suffer pressure loss yeah. in the mid game, as expected in the Vladimir against Ari matchup. But overall, if Rocket can take the good things from this game, improve the bad things, you might actually get an exciting series. Well, we'll find out. They have the potential that is Rocket, of course. Let's go take a look deeper at Origins Come From Behind, Game 1 win. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. We 